Hello and welcome to another episode of Origins Game Fair Spotlight Edition. And today we have a fabulous two individuals who are joining us to talk about the Origins Film Festival. Uh, Kelly and Seth, how are you two doing today? Good. How are you, B? Yeah. I'm fantastic. So I'm admittedly, I've never actually been to a film, a film festival in my life. So as a complete newbie, what do you do? And going into this, what could I expect? Sure. So the Origins Film Festival uh, was started about six years ago uh, to showcase gaming, fantasy, and sci-fi short films specifically. So we thought oh, that would yes. be appropriate for the Origins game for our audience. So uh, it is two days uh, this year. Sometimes we do three, but this year it's two days of uh, short films and feature films, and they're of any genre, as long as they related to gaming, sci-fi, or fantasy. So you'll find a mix of documentary, animation, drama, comedy, somewhere in between. Romance? Um, and <laughs> What was that? Romance? Yes. Romance? Mostly with zombies. Most of I'm them, into it though. though. That works. Okay. Yeah. So, and you'll find really, you know, as far as any subject matter you can imagine, uh, everything from board gaming to, uh, to zombies, like he was saying, <laughs> to um, VR, to robots, to aliens, to uh that's fantastic demons, already angels um, anything you could possibly imagine that fits in those genres so yeah it's 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 quite the gamut and this year we have 50 films so this is our biggest year as far as number of films goes my goodness that's fantastic so how has yep. the growth been i mean let me let's let's backtrack sure. from the beginning why did you start with origins what got you into this um, so I'm just going to set it up and then I'll let you sure, fill in the parts. Time. So uh, we've been attending gaming conventions for a while. And particularly, we started attending them when we made a film called Of Dice and Men, which was oh God, a, uh, I know, <laughs> a feature film um, about a group of role-playing gamer friends and what happens when one of them enlists to go to Iraq so in, in, in year 2013 or so. 2006. Six. So that's where it was set. So it was a dramedy actually, but it was more about their friendships that happened to be gamers. Um, so we were looking for places to show it and we um, we wanted to show it at Origins Game Fair. And so uh, we, we thought it would be a good venue for it. And I'll let Seth take over the uh, yep. story from here. So we were looking for distribution because, and we thought, hey, you know, Gamma's kind of got their finger on all the geeky distribution stuff. So we actually showed our film at the Gamma Trade Show. And okay. I walked up to the director at the time and said, well, you know, Gen Con's got a film festival. Dragon Con's got a film festival. Why doesn't Origins have one? Mm -hmm. And he looked right at me and said, well, I guess we can. You want to do it? <laughs> and that's literally so just, why, why there's an Origins Film Festival. Just some background on the two of us <laughs> a little bit, just to introduce us a little bit. So uh, we're both parts of the film company Cave Girl Productions, which I founded a long time ago, right before I, I met Seth. We are a couple and we both- We are? We are. And uh, 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 we, <laughs> we run Cave Girl Productions. He runs a lot of the sound and legal side, and I run a lot of the producing and editing side. So- um, so yeah, that's how the, the of Dice and Men was our first feature film, and that's why and we. And it's available on Amazon for free. If you and have it's available Amazon on Prime, Amazon Prime if you'd like to check hey. it out. Um, but uh, and Tabletop Santa Rick keeps asking uh, if there's going to be a teaser for the Spark. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so ask us about our current film projects at the end of this. But um, so this was like I said six years ago. So mm -hmm. yeah, when so when they said why don't you run a film festival, you we were like okay, we'd love to. <laughs> this is right up our alley since this is what we do. So um, so the first, I don't remember how many submissions we had the first year. I'd have to look back. It it's rolling. on our website. We have an archive of our different festival years, but I can't remember how many there were the first year. But uh, so we decided um, we would like people to be able to submit short films and feature films <clears throat> having to do with gaming, sci-fi or fantasy because that would target the origins user base 
and that's what exactly. they would find the most interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And we still keep getting every now and again. We just get the most random submissions sometimes. Like people, yeah, some people don't read the submission instructions, and we oh get you know we get straight dramas, and we yep. get you know like, things that have nothing to do with any of those three things. And of course, you know we have to tell them sorry. You know that's not what we're looking way, for. But. Did you read anything before you hit submit? <laughs> right, right. Um, one of the uh, one of the best words of warning. Uh, that we ever got was, was given to us by the Dragon Con Film Festi Festival director. Uh, Matt is awesome. And uh, it, it was basically, yeah, they will never read anything. No, your, they, your, 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 <laughs> filmmakers don't. Filmmakers read. will not read your emails or your rules. Oh my they just goodness. won't. I think that it's not just true of filmmakers, it's true of anybody when you have anything on a website. Like they yeah. don't. They don't read. They don't. I'm mm -hmm. sure Origins has its share of people going, How do I buy a badge? And like, uh, you know, did you click right the website them. that says buy badge? <laughs> right, exactly. So you have to you have to deal with that kind of thing. But most of the time we get a, a good number of submissions and we have to re review everything to see what would fit into not only two or three days of programming, but you know, be most appealing to our audience. So That's uh, the way the film festival runs, since you were saying as a total newbie about the way the film festival works is, so for uh, 12 hours a day, we show uh, short and feature films um, on site. Uh, at usually what in the past, it was just on site at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. Um, and then now this year we're doing it concurrently online. So you'll be able Ooh. to, so for people who can attend Origins or, or won't attend Origins this year because of COVID, um, they'll be able to watch the films online at the exact same time they're being screened in person. So we're, we're streaming them, streaming them live. That's fantastic. Um, Is that yes. easy to set up? Like if I don't, if I'm not familiar with watching things online typically? Yeah, so and like? I'll show you this in a little bit. So we have everything, we'll have everything off originsfilmfestival.com. You'll be able to go to origins originsfilmfestival.com slash online and you'll be able to see the schedule and lineup of films. We have things broken into, we have some feature films are paired with a, a short film or two to kind of introduce them. We have entire blocks of sci-fi. We have three separate blocks of just sci-fi short films. There were so many submitted this year that we liked. Um, and then uh, we have an entire sci-fi short film block of comedies, just comedy sci-fi. Oh my um, goodness, itself. that's excellent. Yeah, so there's kind of <laughs> something for everybody. Um, we also have kind of a horror thriller block, um, the last night, uh, the last block of, of, this, of the schedule. And we have a supernatural block and we even have a um, family friendly kid break at one o'clock oh. on Saturday. So, oh, that's so you can get 20 minutes, you can sit people down, you know, in front of some family friendly short films. So, so we kind of have the whole gamut going. Excellent. Do you have like a favorite category? Like what is your go-to when you're watching films at conventions? Um, I'm a big, big fan of sci-fi shorts okay. um, just because to make a sci-fi short film that works, and I know this from experience, it's so hard to sell a convincing sci-fi period. And most of the time when you're dealing with independent films, they're usually on a lower budget. Yep. Not usually, but sometimes. We, we really have, as far as budgets go, I can talk about that too. We have kind of everything from the lowest budget to the highest budget submitted in our festival. Not everything's Whoa. low budget. Not everything's mm -hmm. done by first-time filmmakers. There are people, veteran filmmakers making these shorts. They're not... They're not um, necessarily the cheapest thing you'll see and be able to tell, you know what I mean? But with sci-fi shorts, particularly, you have to have a good story. If you don't yes. have a good story, it doesn't matter how good your special effects are. It doesn't matter how good the costuming is. Like you have to have a good concept to make a good sci-fi short film. And that's that's my favorite. What's yours? Uh, comedy fantasy, because- Comedy <laughs> fantasy. It's, I, I think that's actually the hardest to do well because you either you either turn into something that's cheesy and silly or Big Bang Theory, which is still mm. laughing at us, not with us. Yeah. So. Big Bang Theory is yeah. gaming, though. You mean fantasy? No, I mean, like, anything that's role-playing related or okay. fantasy, oh, like, I, anything that's I related to, to role-playing, and role-playing is fantasy, you know? Yeah. Right? I, it's, it's really difficult to do comedy well in this genre where you're laughing with us and we're all part of the joke as in, as opposed to, ha ha ha, look at the dork. Yeah, so, yeah. I, and I, like, you've I, seen 
films that have done that properly because that's really we, interesting to me. That appeals done a to film me. Like that properly. So, uh, uh, Dyson Men that we mentioned earlier yeah. was the literal tagline of that film was a geek movie without the self loathing. <laughs> oh, that warms so, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, it's definitely doable. That's and we definitely. have one this year that I think uh, is is pretty cool in that Which regard. Uh, I don't want to call it out by name, oh, but okay. but. If you are aware of the meme and you're a role player and whatever, uh, this is a short film about the fact that if you are our age playing Dungeons and Dragons, it is way more difficult to schedule the game than to play the game. <laughs> yes, I know what so. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's harder to schedule a game than play a game. Yeah, absolutely. So you wouldn't think, you know, a film about trying to schedule a D&D game would... <laughs> but... That's what's most relatable with everybody nowadays. It's totally relatable, right? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, that one really hurts. But yeah, I mean, we, we uh, I'm always amazed every year that we do this um, with the sheer breadth of topics and, and execution of these films. Like, you know, we don't, we don't exclude people who have low budgets, but they're, you know, they're harder to get, they, they have to have that good story, right? So yeah. they, we're not going to take just because you made a film doesn't mean you get in a film festival, unfortunately. That's the way it works. There's got to be something there, you know. It's it's it's, and I'm always amazed how well some lower budgets are at at relating their story to people. I'm amazed at some of the highest end films you can imagine, production budget wise, that have no story. Uh, we <laughs> you know, and it's oh. like it's 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 so <laughs> weird to see that dichotomy, you know, in that yeah. range. It's. And it's, you know, just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you can make a good film. Yeah, every now and again, we get films with, like, honest to God, like, Trek stars or other stars in them. Oh, yeah. That they were somebody's buddy and they did it. And the plot is just horrific. And we're like, oh, my God. Like, Yeah, I mean, you really have to. It, it, and, you know, we, we accept a lot of films. They don't have to be perfect. But, of you know, they have to have something core that speaks to people and and is is well done. So, yeah, it's just, it's really interesting to me how you don't need a budget to make a good film. You know, it's 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 really evident when you look a lot look at a lot of these films. Yep. Am I allowed to ask what the worst film you've ever received was? No, I won't tell you because that's, <laughs> I don't want to shame filmmakers. Oh, well, you know? no, I mean, that's fair I mean, without naming was, them. We, no, we can tell yeah. you what was common amongst them. So yes, Seth, please. I'll let you give your pet peeves. Uh, well, okay, even before. And it's funny, you're going to realize that this isn't my actual biggest pet peeve. Oh, okay. Um, racist, sexist. Oh, like, we got one like, this year that was horrible. Blatantly, like, holy shit. You like, still get that wow. stuff? Oh. Well, it, people just don't, I, they just, they don't yeah, see I don't it. I, without going down a rabbit hole, yeah. Um, yeah. half Awful of America stuff. thinks that that's okay. So <laughs> no right. rabbit holes. We're done Whatever here. politics, but still, like, like, it's amazing what some people think is appropriate for film subjects and it's just it's not good and then right after that is but oh my god audio audio, oh. audio. so the biggest the, the big, really if you're bad not a film audio. person um uh you might not appreciate this but uh but adam might um so <laughs> if you <laughs> if your film is beautiful and has horrible audio it's over like yeah. you you audio is more important than the visual it because be so people, distracting otherwise right people will forgive bad visuals they will not forgive bad audio. grainy grainy video shaky video that's all an artistic choice right yeah. bad audio is just bad bad oh audio goodness. is just bad yeah. so that's the most common issue you find with films and a lot of times it is those first-time filmmakers and stuff who just don't know better and they have to they have to figure this out they have to learn learn how to deal with it but um <laughs> or the folks who just run everything at the end through through a compressor limiter and the <laughs> oh, entire film that's the sound engineer talking <laughs> the entire film is one volume like this screaming at you the whole time Oh audio God. mix is a whole other thing but more more commonly it's just you know not cleaning up your audio or getting bad audio to begin with on set and um you know filmmakers that's my biggest you know advice for for first-time filmmakers is just make sure you're getting good audio oh that speaks to my heart when i'm not doing this i'm podcasting post. so <laughs> but you can't you gotta yeah. do it right you gotta try and do it right the first time you know right. and then fix things afterwards when you're editing oof 
Well, yeah. that's marvelous. So what, um, like you've got some, you've got two days worth of films that are happening. Are there, tell me a little bit about that schedule that's set up. Yes. So can we share our screen? I think it's already shared. It's already so shared? they just have to bring it up. Just bring I it up screen so. and I'll yeah. be happy to show you. Um, great. So if you go to the originsfilmfestival.com website and go to, well, first of all, official selections, I'll show you really quick lists every single film that we're screening in alphabetical order oh that's and so nice tells you what they are where they're from when they're screening and a, a brief description and their main image from from the the film so you can see if you want to watch it um and then if you click on screening schedule and links um this has the schedule for the for both days so uh, Friday on the left, Saturday on the right, and um, you can see how we've broken things up into different blocks. So for example, we're starting off with a feature documentary on Gerard K. O'Neill, um, paired with an amazing short film called Infinite, which is only like four minutes long and is, is, is surreal and it's, it's amazing. Um, and then uh, uh, 4 p.m. that day, we have uh, Pentamine, the Ultimate Mind Sports Championship, which is a gaming <laughs> documentary which is really cool about board gaming and other games. Um, Wait, and Mr. Magic Missile. I'm not oh. I'm getting there. I'm going Friday uh, first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the Friday link first. So um, 7.30, we get into more darker stuff. We've got Tabitha, Witch of the Order with some spookier shorts. And then at 9 p.m., we've got our first sci-fi short film block um, of mostly darker material, sci-fi kind of at, at night. Yeah, um, nice. So that's we our don't, first yeah, block we, of that. We don't ask people to rate their films. Some people right. do, but if yeah. you are a family and you are at Origins and, and <laughs> you're, you want to do things, it gets progressively more mature as you get later. So yeah, that's kind of the idea is we kind of don't, we don't censor our filmmakers. And we, I mean, but, you know, having watched all these films, there's nothing that's, over, over like horrible, egregious. but there'll be language yeah. and violence, you know what I okay. mean? So, uh, and we're going to put up a mature content kind of warning at the beginning of each Perfect. block, uh, just in case. Of but, those blocks. Anyway. Of those blocks, yeah. But at, on Saturday at 12 p.m., we actually decided to put our awards and filmmaker meet and greet first thing on Saturday. That way we can get people who have arrived by Saturday oh, and kind of kind of do the awards um, before even the film festival's over. Um, and not all the filmmakers obviously will be able to make it this year. So it's just kind mm -hmm. of, you know, we'll just announce everything at 12 o'clock. Yeah, one of the things we have learned over the years and so has other, so have other film festival directors is that filmmakers tend to leave early on Sunday of the convention. Right, so, so you get them yeah. on Saturday. <laughs> uh, if, they, if, they, if they do come we do have some filmmakers coming that i've heard from but you know there will obviously be a little less than normal this year yep. um at 1 p.m is our kid break our family friendly short films um just 20 minutes or so of those uh in a row of course the penguins we had mentioned talking to you guys earlier so penguins uh there was a penguins film by the same people that was done a couple of years ago for the festival and that actually won best short so they've done a second short film called penguins in the midnight mansion mystery which is really cute um at 1.30, uh, we have the sci-fi comedy short film block. So all of these yes. are sci-fi comedies, which are fun and about all kinds of different things. I mean, like Zombie Debt is is making Love fun the of title. The term zombie Debt plus incorporating zombies. Um, we've got a, a fake TV show. We've got uh, something about beer. It's it's, <laughs> it's a strange sci set. It's oh my goodness. Set. Um, so uh, where's my mouse? Um, there we go. Uh, and then 3 p.m., we've got a little block of supernatural and superpower related films. Um, and then including one local Ohio filmmaker that's actually going to be there for the screening, which is cool. Awesome. Um, and then uh, 4 p.m., our second short film block of sci-fis. And these are mostly about VR um, that happen to be in this block, VR and time travel. Imagine that during the pandemic, a lot of people did a lot of green screen projects. <laughs> actually, actually, I take that back. The 4 p.m. block is a lot about robots and uh, time travel. I, I mixed that uh, up. Um, and then uh, the block three is some VR and sci-fi romance that kind of goes wrong. <laughs> yes, oh, love, uh, love, love, love. And uh, this one's interesting. It's a modern retelling of the Holy Grail myth. Oh, um, that's what so, that's some G Rail Grail, but yeah, like okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, and then at 9.30, we have our horror block, our horror yes. color block. So the, the feature survival guide um, and then three spooky short films with it. So that's that's the lineup. So like I said, we have 50 films all told and 
it's a really cool lineup. Um, but you can read more about them at the official selections link. Um, and then when we get closer to the date, we'll put up the actual uh, streaming, links. Lay, streaming links. So people will be able to join the streams as they come up. So each one will be a block and a separate stream event. And where are those entrants from? Where are all these films oh, from? Oh yeah, so these films are from all over the place this year. We've got, uh, we've got people, we got five films from Spain. Oh my goodness. We've got uh, <laughs> from Germany, the Ukraine, the Russian Federation, uh, Canada, and the US. Yeah, so, Canada. Um, yeah, um, a nice, nice selection. We, we, for some reason, we, we always have a lot from Spain. I don't know why. Kate, the Spanish Dungeons and Dragons scene is next level. Um, yeah, just really? A, really, a really quick aside, um, if you were to pull the stats from Twitch streaming for how many shows of Dungeons and Dragons are run, sure, we have Critical Role, you know, which is obviously run in English, but comparably, right. the amount of viewers that watch D&D shows uh, in Spanish on Twitch is comparable to like Critical Role viewers, and it's wild to me. It is an entire universe, and I'm trying to like figure out how do I even like peek inside that's um, awesome. Yeah, so <laughs> that informs a little bit onto that. Yeah, in previous years we had a lot of French submissions, but not this year. Not this year for whatever reason. But yeah, it was mostly Spanish, German, Russian Federation, Ukraine, Canada, USA. I can't think of any other. We usually get uh, a couple of Chinese films. We didn't. This not this year. Either. Not this year. Yeah. They're, um, they're usually animated or super, cool. super uh, CGI'd. Yeah, but no, not this year. But yeah, it's 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 always amazing to me how many different countries we get submissions from. And that's a pretty cool thing, like for a, yeah. for a little film festival in on its only on its fifth year of operation in Ohio, right? you know, in Ohio. Like, all right, I, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. I think it's you know, as a filmmaker who makes films from th these genres, it's you know, you're always looking for film festivals that are going to appreciate your content because a lot of these don't get picked up by normal film festivals. <sighs> Okay. Or, or normal in quote marks, but they don't get picked up yeah. by mainstream film festivals as much because the content is seen as kind of odd. Niche. You know? yeah. <laughs> I find odd, more cool. like gaming films, you know, like uh, gaming films especially are hard to get attention to, or at least in the past have been hard to get attention to. Um, and, you know, uh, fantasies getting better for sure sci-fi has always had those genre film festivals you go to like boston has a boston sci-fi film huh. festival that's really okay popular. like you know it's like there's there's certain sci-fi has always had its outlets but the other ones not so much so mm -hmm. i think that's that's why um we've been getting so many submissions recently that's wonderful though you can create a space for all these people to finally be able to share their work and their passions and have that be shared with the pe like with the public i think well, that's especially marvelous it's with people that really appreciate it you know yes, like the, the, the like-minded crowd is really welcoming to the content so you know it's it, the audience you know you're getting the right audience for it you know exactly now if anybody wanted to show up to the meet and greet how does that go is that a ticketed event do folks have to register for that Nope, nope. It's just just show up. We are currently waiting. Our, our room assignment at the convention center is TBD, um, so <laughs> we're we're waiting to get confirmation on the exact room. That will obviously go up on the website and our social media uh, as soon as we have it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's literally if you have an Origins Game Fair badge, you can walk right in and join. And we encourage people to do that. I mean, I, it we've done projects with people that we met at film festival meet and greets. Yep. So. Aww. <laughs> both, both the most recent one, uh, I Beholder, The Art of Dungeons and Dragons. So that that was us and our partner Brian Stillman, and yes. we met Brian at a film festival. Yeah, it's, like, it's, and it's, we're at working a on another convention film festival. No less, oh not like a big film festival. You know, yeah. like at a little one. We met our film partner that we were making two films with. And so it's 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 crazy. If you're in any way interested in filmmaking and the filmmaking process, this is a great place because everybody there is operating. Most of them are operating on a shoestring budget. They're passionate about what they do, and they'll talk your ear off about it for hours. <laughs> so if you want, if you want to learn anything about indie filmmaking, you know our meet and greet's probably a good place to, to start. Yeah, yeah, it's oh. good. there's been a lot of good connections made there. Oh, I think that's marvelous. And for our viewers, that is again at twelve o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Now the Origins Film Festival Awards is that something that's going to be announced in that same TBD room? Yep. yep, it's, it's, it's the same event this year. We had done them separately before. 
But mm-hmm. since we knew there'd be a smaller group of filmmakers attending this year, we were like, okay, we'll we'll just hold both events at the same time. So normally we show clips of the of the uh, of all the films that are in the festival. So we're gonna yeah. try to do you know like because you need more editing. Even that, right? I, I'll edit together kind of a uh, <laughs> never too a, much a show oh, reel dear. of all the films in the festival. But with fifty, it's gonna be hard because I don't oh want to be gosh, sitting yeah. there for you know half an hour watching thirty minutes, right? Like <laughs> so, I'm gonna have to pick like thirty seconds from fifty. 50 films and show them so um and then we we announce the awards and so we give awards out in um in several different categories so um, this is what I'm a sucker for this is what I'm here for give me the categories so uh going to my submit page to remind myself what those categories are so uh the awards and prizes so we give a film for um best feature best short best gaming film Best sci-fi film, best fantasy film, and audience awards. So we poll Ooh. our audiences as they come in. We have to talk about how we're going to work that with the online versions. And yeah. see if I don't have, think the online folks. I don't think we're going to be. I we'll have, we'll have to see if we can figure out if online online audience members can can well, vote. Yeah, but maybe. But and, and we'll that see. certainly won't be announced on the Saturday afternoon because there we won't be able to tabulate the votes for the films that would. The audience yeah, award that. doesn't get announced right. at 12 o'clock. All the other awards ah. are determined by our judges ahead of time. So the audience okay. award is always going to be afterwards. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'll have to think about I hadn't thought about how to deal with the online audience this year. Well, we'll get back like to that. Good old fashioned <laughs> Google Doc form. I love filling out forms. So like uh, give me give me like a I, I questionnaire. That's a good idea. Yeah. We had because this is the first year we're dealing with an online ah. version. So um uh what are you looking up yeah, Google I was forms. About, uh, judging process oh the judging Ooh. process is really simple it's not on there uh, um oh it's just who are the directors, who are the directors. Yeah. Uh, uh. so yeah the judging process is we get uh Steph and I make an initial pass at the films and we say okay here are our nominations and we give those to the judges so the judges okay. we have um every year we pick a few different people um they're usually representative of of the industry. So we have uh, someone who's a long time gamer because it's an origins game fair. So we have someone <laughs> who's been gaming for 20 plus years, you know, 40, yes. 40 <laughs> at this point. Oh my uh, word. That is impressive to me. Yeah. yeah so we have long time gamers. We have um, uh, filmmakers, V judges, mm-hmm. uh, other filmmakers uh, that have been making this genre of these genres of film for a long time. And then we usually involve just an industry person. Right. Um, so and they've been different many many years uh cool yeah know, they're very we, different we, years. We that's good i know who one of them is on a regular basis but we don't like to reveal that until yeah, after the festival well, because people get pestered. Until closer to the oh festival. yeah <laughs> so people will get pestered but they're and, people who appreciate the content and yeah. so it's not you know it's not just random people that are just <laughs> right? and, and it's not like, just us we only it's do not ties just us we, we only break ties we only break too. it down into you know re- watch these 10 films yeah. you know it's like we so the judges don't have to watch 50 have films. we ever had to break a tie i don't have we so we, we don't, I don't remember we have our judges and they judge and the yeah. only the only time we weigh in because a lot of the people who are submitting films are friends and, and so, mm-hmm. so yeah. we don't we don't we touch don't, that we don't be biased involved. yeah yeah we yeah. don't want to be biased so no, we um, so they they rate them on a scale uh, on a few different scales on production value, on story, on acting. On, you know, so we give them a, a, a sheet of rating scales to make. Oh, I love that. Form. Again, I love filling out forms. So it's like a checkbox, like story <laughs> one they, out of five. Do they get to do it all on Film Freeway? Yeah, yeah. So, so we use Film Freeway for our submission process, which is the only place really to submit films for film festivals at this point. There used to be without a box, but that has gone hmm. away. Um, I think that was absorbed by IMDb. But anyway, uh, so, um, so uh, Film Freeway is the place to go if you're hosting a film festival to have online submissions. So um, okay. Film Freeway has tools available on it for judging and they can do all their judging right in the, in the platform and, and oh, submit those so nice. and comments and stuff. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, there's so much in this process that I've not even considered. Um, yeah. But like, never really thought about what the judges have to think about. But there's a lot to consider, especially with something like a topic that is so narrow and niche, but you have to kind of find ways to expand upon all of that. Yeah, and it still comes down. I mean, they're very close calls with some of these films. I mean, because yeah. there's so many good 
things that have been submitted. I mean, there's a reason why we selected them for the film festival. You know, it's, it's, there's so much good content. So it's really, you know, getting really picky and minutia, you know, to, to say one's better than the other, you know, and that's why, you know, different film festivals judge the same film different ways. It's just because different people of course. are looking at it. It's subjective, you know, so. Yeah. Um, is art is subjective? Art is subjective. <laughs> oh no, are we just learning this? Well, 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 Seth, we're gonna have a talk. <laughs> but I like to think that we have a good representation of, of films and it's not just the films with the big stars it's not just mm-hmm. the films that are you know million dollar budgets it's there's people are it's they're getting judged on a total package versus just you know one or the other so I really like that in the future would you ever add any more award categories especially with the growth of not only your film submissions but with how many you're now showing for the film festival yeah, we've, we've thought about doing it. Re- the problem with our festival specifically, not problem, but the, the interesting thing about it is that we can't say best documentary, for example, because in one year, we might only get two documentaries like we got this uh... year. So we can't, so we can't, you know, go too much more granular with the awards because you are best animated and we might only get two animated films, you know, so yep. It, so that's why we went with the main categories of gaming, sci-fi, and fantasy, because those are the three genres we accept. And, you know, we do get enough of each one to make a choice. Well, if we were um, to expand like this, and this is the, the ways we could expand it are things like best actor. We could. Best we could sound go into, design. We like, could go into more of those type categories ooh, for sure. Again, best sound design. That appeals there to at least go. three people yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? After this year, we might do that. We might do that. Um, it, it's a little too, I mean, we could consider it for this year. Well, we don't pay our judges, right? So right, judges are voluntary. There's not, there's not a lot of money in this. For, yeah. <laughs> well, another thing people should realize is that there's not a lot of money there's in running money indie in film business. festivals. Yeah, so. so. So it's more work for everybody involved. And yes. it's, it, we would have to go to our judges and say, all right, well, we're going to increase the amount of work you have to do. Right? Yeah, it's a lot to, to single out. You know, if you watch, even with the list whittled down to, say, 15 films out of the 50 for the judges, that's a lot to go through and go, okay, that one person was the best actor. That is, that's a lot with a deadline too, you know? Right. And we usually give them a couple of weeks to review things because yeah. we are, especially this year, we were kind of cutting it to the wire as far as what our selections were and our submission dates and everything. So, Um, Well, and yeah, I mean, we've got to close the submissions online, then figure out a schedule, then get it to you guys so you can put it in the book, right? Right. And that's a pretty short period of time where we've closed entries and we have to review everything to make sure it's technically sufficient, that it's not just a piece of crap, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. And then we've got to get our list of of everything to origins so that it can get into the book. To make sure, you know, I'm pairing the right films with each other. Oh my gosh, together, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, I'm making sure the timelines work and everything. So it's a... It's a labor of love. (laughs) We are much smaller than, I mean, making film festivals run at a larger scale is, I mean, you need multiple, you need a staff, you know, to do it. Yeah, So with two people, it's hard to... uh, manage that well you know and it's funny i've actually gone out to um uh the columbus there, there's a film the Col- oh yeah columbus uh yeah in, in film. yeah and i just i've nothing nobody want none of these films i'm like really you film students don't want to come and help and volunteer some time you want to do this for a living and you get to hang out with yeah. filmmakers for three days you think that would be it's, ideal it's, you get to learn like you get to see how it works see how things are happening yeah, huh. yeah. yeah. we'll try again sometime we'll try again in the, you know. <laughs> in the future in the, in the after days. Yes. Yes. Well, with that being said, too, what have been the biggest challenges with dealing with, you know, our current life predicament of having to stay inside more often? Like, have there been any difficulties along the way? Well, I mean, it's this year where I'm really glad we're able to put things online for it because, mm-hmm. um, and it just makes sense at this point to do an online version of the festival. Um, and now we were just forced to, you know, it's kind of like, okay, of course we should do it this way. Um, and that way people have more options. So it's not just if people couldn't attend origins, like say COVID wasn't going on at all. It would give people an opportunity to watch the films at another location. They don't have yeah. to come to the physical room space to watch it on a, you know, not a giant screen, but a smaller screen when they could watch it from the comfort of their hotel room if they really wanted to. That's exactly know? what I was thinking of just now. Like most people tap out the laptop, you got your phones. If, you know, right. it's like 2 a.m. in the morning, you've been playing D&D all night, you're ready to crash, you want to load up some films that you saw on that list. Perfect. That is ideal right there. 
yeah. So, you know, I'm glad we're doing the online version. Uh, I'm sad that that means that there will be less people in the room because yes. it is, it is you, nothing as a filmmaker, nothing ever replaces the energy of watching an audience watch your film. Uh, you know, and so, and, and watching them laugh at the right points or, or be sad scared, at the right point or be or scared jump, or, or yeah. whatever, you know, <laughs> like it just, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a very visceral kind of experience when you can watch your film in a theater or even a convention room, you know, it's, it's just, it's nice. So I'm sad that we won't get to do that this year. With folks who are watching online, um, I think you'd mentioned that it's going to be on Twitch. Uh, will chat be active? Uh, it won't be on Twitch. It'll be on Vimeo. Oh, Vimeo, correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, comments? Yeah, um, will they be allowed? Yeah. Yes, so there will be chat. Yes. Okay. There will be chat. Um, we thought about doing some live events along with the film showings, but it's just not feasible this year with, okay. the, with schedules and things. So in the future, I would like to expand the online version of the film festival to have some panels and, and other things that we can do virtually. So, um, or to stream from uh, Columbus itself and yes. put that online. The so we, we don't have the we don't have the the camera capabilities or staff to do that. Well, we have the camera. We have the cam right. But... Technically, we have the camera capabilities. We just don't have somebody to run it and make sure it's mm -hmm. all working well, and do other things. My biggest issue with that is the internet connection and the internet I, connection in the convention center. It's <laughs> you cannot rely on it. I mean, I need to have a st a rock solid internet connection from right. the film room. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I would love to. I would. I'd stream everything. Right. We 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 would right. have live interactions with the filmmakers going yes. at the same time. But it's Ugh. just it's just not feasible. But if you've ever worked with Teamsters at a convention center, nothing's free. <laughs> <laughs> Things are very yeah. expensive. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just not workable. So. Okay. No, that's fair. Well, I guess we can lean into is what are you most excited about for this film festival? The two of you. Uh, I'm really happy. This is our fifth year. So yes. this is so it would have been our fifth year last year if if origins had happened. So this year is our official fifth year um, of running it, and it's it's really neat to think we've been doing this for for five years. Um, and we've gotten you know if you look at our reviews on Film Freeway, a lot of filmmakers have responded to it that have attended in person um, and otherwise, and and just been like you know how happy they were at the festival and how friendly we were, and you know like and like so I I think we made a nice welcoming environment to it. Um, in previous years, we had also had a, a table in the vendor room where people could come and learn about the films that were going to be shown and get the schedule and all of that. This year, we're not doing a physical table in the vendor mm -hmm. room because of room restrictions, but we are going to have uh, a virtual booth and Origins online. So people will be able to awesome. go there. We haven't, I don't have a URL for you yet or anything, but um, but people will be able to go and find out more about the films there or just go to our website too. So yeah, add a QR yeah. code to the table. You know, kids nowadays, yeah. we don't want to do anything but open up my camera, scan it, and walk away. Exactly. So that would... so. <laughs> but, but one of the things we were able to offer the filmmakers in the past was they were able to sell their merchandise at uh, So That would have been you know, so lovely. Like, you know, it's not so much of an issue anymore because physical media it's is, going away. is going away. So True the so. DVDs doesn't really apply. Stickers are always a big, good, good bet, though. Like if you're giving I will away stickers, always buy stickers. Paraphernalia, but, yeah. So stickers and, and uh, T-shirts and, and Give me a ones. pen with your logo. I will grab that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so I'm kind of sad not to offer the, the physical, you know, kind of stuff people can grab this year, but, um, I'm not sad about sitting in the, in the, in the, uh, the vendor room, vendor for, room for eight hours, hours a day. <laughs> so I was the one when we split up the work no. being us being the two main people doing it, he would run the room of the film festival and I would run the table. And so I would be in the vendor room for eight hours straight. Two days. just fade after like uh, five hours it, 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 it <laughs> moments right so um i'm not i'm not i'm not unhappy about not doing that this year but i will be at home by myself with the cat running the online version <laughs> festival so no, see, you're not alone. Double mask walking around uh getting everything <laughs> set up and yeah. do, be, doing all the tech will there be like are there links available to any of the filmmakers online stores if they have anything like that like how um, that's a good use... idea yeah. I, I can if they provide it i will put them on the website awesome um but uh right now we don't have them up yet and okay. a lot of the ones that are of a quality to have a product for sale likely can't because they're working on a distribution deal or something right or... yeah there's yeah it, it, 
it's sometimes valuable, sometimes not. Um, it just depends on the film, but we, we can certainly include their film websites if they have them and things. Yeah, I'm always just a big fan of trying to find ways to support people through like one-time ways, you know? Absolutely. Well, Seth, what has been your favorite experience about working with the film festival over here at Origins Game Fair? My favorite experience overall? Yeah. Um, oh, here's a one. Uh, this one always comes to mind. Uh, it's, it's a real heartwarming thing. So our oh, first or second year, we had a, a young lady from, I think, West Virginia, somewhere relatively close. I, we live in, in the DC metro area. Right. Mm -hmm. And she was there. She was a junior or senior in high school. And she came to all of our films. She came to all of our little meet and greets. Like we, had, we did a couple of panels. And two years later, she came back as a film student. Ah, and that, that's so nice. That's just like, wow. And she showed her film. And, and she oh. screened her, the film that she had made because she was inspired by our silly little film fest. It was amazing. It was just oh, that's so incredible. Really cool. It was yeah. really cool. And there have been some other incidents where people have made connections with other, other filmmakers and things. And so those relationships have formed and that's been really cool. But that is my favorite story too, yeah, is about her. Yeah. Um, that just made you feel like, okay, we've done our good here. You know, I've right? <laughs> done something positive in the world. Um, oh, that's incredible. I feel like you need a photo of like, you know, holding arm in arm. And if there's like a diploma or anything that she has, just like, I'm so proud of her, you know? And there's been some other filmmakers, like I got an email from one this year already that um, we accepted in the film festival and they were just so excited that they got it because we're not a big film festival, right? Yeah. Uh, they were so excited they got into a film festival Aww. and they're like, I'm bringing my brother, I'm bringing my mom, I'm bringing, like, they were so excited just to be able to say, I'm in a film festival and I get to, you know, get to say that and have the laurels, you know, on my, on my website and everything else. Um, so, you know, especially for those first time filmmakers, you know, that are making these genre films, um, being the first festival that accepts one of their films um, and shows it they're you know, that's rewarding. To them, and, so. and they're not in it because... And because they're not in it because just because like, right. it's a decent film. I can right? be a real so... a-hole about technical stuff, right? So it, they did something <laughs> they good. They had to do something good. Yes. So it's not, it's like not just anybody. You know? right. mm -hmm. So it's, it's, but still a lot of times, like I was saying before, this content gets overlooked because of the subject matter. Yep. Um, so even if the execution is good. Uh, well, now I have so much to look forward to. I, when you were going through that list in the schedule, there's at least three films that I absolutely want to watch exclusively based on the really cool names. Um, yeah, Zombie Debt awesome. being one of them. Zombie Debt is a great film. Uh, and Grail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Grail, G-Rail. G-Rail. I love some of the names. I love some of the names. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan. Now I need to do one that's like spam a lot, but like with hardcore rap. G-Rail. G rail, really? <laughs> I'm sorry, I yeah. Boo. <laughs> oh man, the, the wheels are turning already. <laughs> oh no. Well, so I think the things we're going to be showing at the film festival and in, in some of the screenings is we're going to be showing a one minute trailer for our next film, which is uh, Igniting the Spark: The Story of Magic: The Gathering. So it's yes. a documentary on magic. So um, that will be coming out next year. So we have we have a, a a one minute trailer that we're going to selfishly put in front of some of these film blocks because we can because yeah. it's our festival. Yes. But imagine that. Like I I would expect certain people are interested in this particular little silly cardboard game. So. Yeah. Seems like you're picking the right audience just by a little bit, you know. <laughs> well, we do not include said. our other films in the festival this year. I will I will have you know we 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 don't necessarily include our own films. Uh, we, we're obviously ineligible to win anything. We're, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes we've done exhibitions of our films or you know close friends films that we couldn't actually fit in um but this year we actually did not include any that's, of our that's films. a good thing like that we're so packed that we, we don't have that lovely yes. yeah well if folks did want to support you or watch any of your films where could they do so so you can find information on cave girl productions at cavegirl.com um and uh Aya the Beholder, The Art of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, our documentary so cool. on DD art is available on Amazon Prime. And uh, as well as uh, of Dyson Men, our uh narrative dramedy about D D players. Fair warning of Dyson Men is R-rated. Okay. Okay. Dyson Men <laughs> thank is, you, is thank you. So like don't watch it with any children around me. Yes. Gotcha. Aya the Beholder, sure. Of Dyson Men, no. 
<laughs> okay. Um, igniting the spark will be along the same lines of yeah, I have, it's a I documentary. Have it's gonna, gonna be a documentary, so it'll yeah. Be Awesome. Ah, that's so fantastic. Well, one more time, folks, if you are attending Origins Game Fair, um, you can check out the film festival, which will be hosted October 1st and October 2nd for this fabulous convention. Seth and Kelly, is there anything else that you would like to plug? Nope, just check out originsfilmfestival.com to learn about all of our awesome films and things. And please come and introduce yourself if you are at the festival. Don't be shy, y'all. Just because we can only see your eyeballs, don't be shy. You know, you can still elbow bump. You can still express Perfect. loud enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody have a fantastic night. And we will talk to you tomorrow for Tabletop Otaku at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye. Bye.